Happy Wednesday, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. So we have our today our brokers meeting every Wednesday, 12 o'clock. As usual, our number one real estate title attorney, uh, our mortgage broker, our insurance guy. Today, immigration lawyer is not here. He is in uh, Moscow. And our new managing broker, Ben Garcia. So very nice brokers meeting today we have. Enjoy. Learn, get experience, ask questions, and be the best in the industry. So we start with John Yuan, a number one real estate title attorney in South Korea. Yes! Golden, no golden. Thank you, Roman. Okay, so today what we're going to talk about is there are revisions to the as is residential contract and the regular residential contract. They made revisions as of this month, about a, month, a week or two ago. So the revisions you'll see if you're using the correct one on form simplicity, on the bottom of the page it says revision 4 slash 17. So make sure you're using the most recent version of the as is contract. Okay, so these changes that I've highlighted in yellow are the same to the regular contract with the as is contract. So we're going to start with page 2. Page 1, there's no change. Page 2, at the top, the first change we see is line 59 and 60. They have changed some time periods for force majeure, which means forces of nature. And in South Florida, what that means is hurricanes. So they have extended the time period from three days to seven days. It was three days after the hurricane ends, they're expected to close. Now they've extended it a couple more days to seven days. Not a really big issue there but just wanted to make you guys aware. What the big issue is, is the next section. Under financing, there are a lot of changes, as you can see, all in yellow. So the first change, which is significant, is on line 86. And it's good that Yuri's here. He can help us uh, explain some of these terms. So on line 86, they have removed the term written loan commitment, and they've replaced it with loan approval. And they shorten the time period in which to get that from 45 days to 30 days. So now the terminology is loan approval. And the time period for a loan approval to get is 30 days. John? Yes, sir. Come but, on over here. I think it would be easier to just... Sure. While we go going by that. Look, you still can put 45 there. It's only if it's left blank. It's 30. The default was in the previous version. If you left it blank, it's 45. Now, if you left it blank, it's 30. But I would still strongly suggest to put 45 there. Thank you. Uh, yes, Sorry. thank you. Uh, so, I guess why they did that is they want to shorten the time period to get the approval and to move the process forward. I guess is that why I don't really know the, the reason. The assumption is that with the new rules, new CFPB rules, we are already more than six or seven months after all of those changes. Uh -huh. So they assume that every part of that process, mortgage brokers, banks, title agencies are getting used to the new things. Is that true? No, obviously <laughs> not, especially banks. And so I'm still under 45 days. Okay. Prefer. Yeah. Good to know. So uh, you might want to consider uh, putting 45 days in there and not being able to fly. And it becomes significant, and we're going to talk about the next things, uh, why it is significant. So on line 91 and 92, the buyer shall make mortgage loan application within five days and after the effective date. So we all remember when the effective date is? When the last person signs or last person initials, any changes. So within five days after the effective date, you have to make the application. And here's the addition. Use good faith and diligent effort to obtain approval of a loan meeting the financial terms. And they're after close. So you have to use good faith effort to move forward. So what is good faith effort? We're going to see it in the next paragraph, line 95 through 98. 
Buyer's failure to use diligent effort and obtain loan approval during the loan approval period shall be considered a default under the terms of the contract. So that's significant. So now, if the buyer is dragging their feet or not presenting documentation to the mortgage broker, they can be considered a default. So you want to explain to your buyer that, hey, there are new rules. You have to contact your mortgage broker right away. And you have to work with them to get the loan approved. So that's actually probably a little bit better for you now, Yuri, that they start to uh, work and harder. Like everything in life, I mean, there are good sides of that and there are bad sides. Because usually, usually, we do not want to start the process without seeing a contract signed by everybody. Okay? So sometimes I do ask our clients to send me your pay stubs, your tax returns, especially if it's needed for pre-approval. Now, but there are some other things like funds to close, like bank statements, like to check that there are no big cash deposits. So all of those things are always done after the contract is signed and we have a green light. So, yeah, hopefully that will push our clients to do it faster and more like diligent matter. But again, it's five days, right? Five days, it should be enough for us to submit. Okay. I've got a quick question. Sure. Um, it's referring to um, uh, application within five days above, okay? So you're really getting that when you're doing, when you're starting the pre-approval, is that correct? I'm getting for pre-approval, and we spoke about it. There are different types of pre-approval, and I don't want right, to like, interrupt. They, they have to make app, mortgage loan application for financing. That within five days. They need to sign disclosures in five days. So that's the th that's, that's what's what really what amazing. really what's application Got means. It. Not to just call me and say, Yuri, here are my social and here are my yeah. name and current address and date of birth, and let's see, I'll sign and we'll get everything else. So. Yeah, we need disclosures in five days. Okay. And that's important because it says, and we'll see later on, that if you don't make diligent effort, the buyer is going to be considered in default of the contract. So make sure you tell your buyer if they're getting a loan to contact your mortgage broker as soon as possible and to comply with all the mortgage broker requirements. So then the definition for what is diligent effort, and we'll see that on line 96. Diligent effort includes timely furnishing of all documents and information and paying of all the fees and charges requested by the buyer's mortgage broker. So that includes appraisals and sometimes inspections if the mortgage broker is required. Next, we're gonna to move to line 99. Buyers shall keep seller and broker fully informed about the status of buyer's mortgage loan application. And this is the addition of loan approval and loan processing and authorizes buyer's mortgage broker, lender, and closing agent to disclose such status and progress and release preliminary and finally executed closing disclosures and settlement statements to the seller and the seller's broker. <coughs> so that's good if you represent the seller and you want to know what's going on with the loan, you can contact the buyer's broker, if they don't tell you what's going on, you can contact the mortgage broker directly. Now, Yuri, that's probably not so good for you because you'll be getting more phone calls, but right. at least it opens up some transparency so the seller knows what's going on and maybe the deal moves a little bit quicker through the process. Next, on line 103, upon buyer obtaining loan approval, buyer shall promptly deliver written notice of such approval to the seller. So during those 30 days, or if you extend it to 45 days, you have to tell the seller that loan approval has been given. Now, your, are loan approvals given in writing, or this is just an email okay. from and the realtor to the seller? Here is the terminology is definitely like old. 
there is no loan approval anymore. There is no loan commitment anymore. There is a conditional approval. That is the document that we are usually getting about five, seven days after submission to the bank. And what it says, it says on top of the page, your loan is approved in 99% of the cases. Now, after that, there could be eight pages, six pages, or 12 pages of different conditions. So, so it says your loan is approved, but you have to make sure you satisfy. It could be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 different conditions. So in my mind, that conditional approval is not worth the paper that it's written on. Because just about every loan is approved. Now, can you satisfy all the conditions? That's where our main work is. So yeah, we'll get those loan approvals, but again, I, I wouldn't put too much emphasis on, on that. But yes, you are going to get five, seven, maximum ten days after submission, you can get that document. Okay, so once you get that document from the mortgage broker, make sure you forward that to the seller's realtor or the seller. It becomes important later on, and we'll see why, because if you don't, the seller has the opportunity to cancel this contract. So we'll see that in the next page. Line 104. If buyer is unable to obtain loan approval after the exercise of diligent effort, which was defined above, then at any time prior to the expiration of a loan approval period, which is 30 days if we leave it blank, buyer may provide written notice to seller stating that the buyer has been unable to obtain loan approval, and then the buyer has two choices. Number one, they can say, okay, well, we're going to waive that loan approval requirement and we're going to continue on with the contract. Why would they do that? Maybe they say, well, now we can buy it with cash. Or maybe they say, well, we're pretty much guaranteed that we're going to get the loan, so we'll waive this approval period. Or number two, if they don't get the loan approval, they can cancel the contract. That's what my one is. And that portion is actually how it's written now. It's much more clear than it was in the previous version. Right. And in my personal opinion, it's much better. Much better because if something going really wrong, something going really wrong, this is a clear way for our buyer to get out of the contract and get his deposits back. Because in the end of the day, the last thing that you or I want is to our buyer to lose the deposit. For me, it's the ultimate disaster. And, and I didn't have it even once. But that's what, what, what doesn't allow me to, to sleep at night. So if we have a pretty clear way now how we can cancel the contract and our buyer will get deposit back and maybe we'll look for something else. When is happening? It's, it's, it doesn't happen a lot, but for example, somebody is buying a condo, okay? And in spite of all of your efforts and our efforts to understand if that condo has any open litigations or if that condo has appropriate master insurance policy, it's not always that we can get that information on time. Because there are different homeowner associations, there are different people working there. Sometimes it's very hard. So what may happen that in the day of 28, we're going to get from homeowner association, they're going to send us their master policy insurance, where we'll find out that in spite of the fact that that condo is in a flood zone, there is no flood policy for that condo association. That makes this condo complex unobtainable for mortgage. So in this case, what will happen, and it's nobody's fault, because 
nobody could foresee something like like that in the beginning. It's not that customer doesn't have enough income or something wrong with his credit or any other reason. Okay, in this case, on day 28, customer will be able to easily get out of the contract and get his deposit back. I have a quick question on that also, please. Um, it says that buyer may provide written notice to seller. Now, we've always required the mortgage company to provide a denial letter to the buyer to provide to the seller. It's different now. So you're telling me now, this is the difference, that the buyer can just say, hey, sorry, I didn't get it? And smart seller will ask the buyer show the proof of that right but how it's written i agree with you how it's written it's like i woke up buyer's remorse right. and i'm saying i don't want it anymore but smart seller and smart selling agent will ask we'll for, for for yeah right because the buyer has to use diligent effort if right. not using diligent effort as we just saw it could be considered a breach of the contract so an email from the buyer here that says I'm sorry? No, I was just going to say, so a written notice could be the buyer sends an email and says, I couldn't get the loan. I'm done. And if the seller doesn't dispute it, that's all. Like I said, smart okay. seller will ask, okay. show me denial letter for sure. Okay, so then, I'll put a situation like that, you know, put a situation like that, the condo dogs, okay? So the condo dogs, uh, you see all these in the contacts. Not only that, like, you know, if they have a minimum deposit, 20% instead of... Uh, Pre preserves and right, so on. Exactly. So, the buyer is supposed to see all those things. Once you receive the contacts, you have three days to, you know, you know by knowledge, you have to decide what to do. But, you know, just can the seller come, you know, to the buyer and say, well, that was all in the contacts and you foresee this and, uh, you know, and tie him up, can, can he do that? Here is how it works. To get a contact question from a regular type of owner association, you need to pay money. From 200 to I've seen 450. Now, and here is a dilemma that we are facing every time when we are doing contacts. Are we asking our clients to pay for contact questionnaire in the beginning of the process? And so on contact questionnaire, if there is an open litigation, they will show. If there is an owner concentration more than 50, they will show. If somebody owns more than 10% of the units, it will be there. Okay? Or, or we do not want to burden our customer with this expense and we going forward, we do whatever we need to, to do, we gathering all the documents, we submitting to the bank, and that's when it happens. Because it can die before. If they don't have enough income or, or any other situation that underwriter will see that it's not good, they will tell us before that expense. It's always, in, it, from my experience, clients doesn't want to pay that. Doesn't. The only expense that they are ready to pay is an appraisal because nothing but, they can do. But from the question there, usually is a seller to pay. No. Right? No. Unfortunately, from my experience, no. And I agree with you because somebody who lives in the building can go downstairs into a homeowner association office and say, look, I live here, I pay $800 every month's maintenance. Please fill out the contact question. And for some reason, I don't see it. I don't see it. So what it had, what what's happening that buyer is paying for that, or if it's a limited condo review, nobody pays for that. It's a very short form, and that homeowner association do for free. But 
that's that's how it is. Okay, moving on to page 3 of 12, the next page, line 109, very important. If buyer fails to timely deliver either notice provided above, which we just talked about, to seller prior to expiration of the loan approval period, then the loan approval shall be deemed waived, in which event this contract will continue as if the loan approval had been obtained. However, now this is the important part. Seller may elect to terminate this contract by delivering written notice to buyer within three days after expiration of the loan approval period. So if you represent a buyer and you don't give a loan approval notice to the seller, after those 30 days, the seller has three days to cancel. Now you're thinking, why would the seller want to do that? Because Maybe it's during like that. that time, those 30 days, they got a cash offer. Or maybe they got an offer worth more. So it's very important if you represent the buyer to make sure you get that loan approval within the 30 days and send it to the seller. Otherwise, the seller can cancel. Now, this is good to know if you represent the seller, you have this potential out. So continue to take backup offers if you have a buyer obtaining a loan. And if they don't give you a loan approval within 30 days, speak to your seller and say, hey, we have this option. To cancel if you want to, what do you want to do? Let them decide what they want to do, but you can have this in your back pocket as well. Yes, Rome? This contract, John, is already in the form simplicity or it's not yet? There? Yes. It's there? Is this contract separate from SE, so it just replaces the old version? It replaces the old version, yes. So whatever I printed last, like uh, yesterday, therefore it, it was already this one? The way to check, you see on the bottom where it says Florida Realtors, Florida Bar, as is 5, revision. 417. So you have to make sure that the contract that you printed out says that because that says it was revised on April 2017. So that's, that's I don't know, you all know when you have the latest contract. Okay, thank you, John. I have one question regarding this part of the day. You said that you know, the buyer is waiving the right of the, of the you know, loan approval. In, yeah, in English have... terms, the contract became a cash contract. Exactly. So that's in English. In plain English. To, yeah. In plain English, the contract became a cash contract. Perfect. So now he's forced to close. Unless there's other contingencies in the contract, like inspection or whatever else yeah, you have. But let's say those things are passed. <coughs> he's now you're waiting for this loan to... approval or requirement. Yes. Wow. Okay. It's and good. that's where we all. We're always saying, okay, it's a cash contract from now, and I had those wow. situations more than once. So you have two options. You close with cash or hard money loan. Because hard money, it's always, it's not, I mean, it's almost always done. And that's the only option in those cases. So on the, um, <coughs> with the, with the three-day period now, this is, if the seller wants to get out within three days, right, because he's taking another contract, then he's not, then he's voluntarily moving on and the buyer can get their uh, money back. Is the buy, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So, so that's a, it's, a, it's important to know Absolutely. that if he, if the seller, uh, decides at, in that three-day period to take another contract and voluntarily remove himself from this, right? Otherwise, he can just ride it out, okay? And say, you, your financing contingency is over. If, if you get financing, great, we're moving, we, you know, we sell the house. If you don't, I'm keeping that money. Yeah, I had a case where 800,000 purchased, 250,000 was deposited. And that was exactly the situation, and it was bad. It was bad because we didn't have those, those three days in the old one, and the buyer said, don't close. Don't close, I'll keep you 250 and I'll sell it. I have no problem with that. So we end up with hard money in the last hour of, of the country. So it, it, it happens. It's that it, it happens. So to answer Ben's question, that would be line 113. 
if this contract is timely terminated as provided above, and the buyer is not in default under the terms of the contract, buyer shall be refunded to deposit there by releasing buyer and sell all further applications. Line 116, if loan approval has been obtained or deemed to be obtained, buyer and buyer fails to close this contract, then the deposit shall be paid to the seller. Unless it says it's the seller's default. Or number two is the property related conditions. I guess that would be in the conditions of loan approval if the property has some issues that need to be cleared. And number three, if the appraisal comes in short, mm -hmm. then the uh, buyer does not have to move forward with the contract. So and it's again, I mean, that was how it was in the old business. Correct. Yeah. If the appraisal would came low, you can get out of the contract. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was like yeah. Do we have a mixture of options? Pauline, if they make. All right, so those are financing terms. Be familiar with it because you're going to have to recommend or uh, advise your client on these new changes. Next change is line 155 and 156. They basically define what a municipal lien search is. And that basically is a search of unrecorded liens. A title search searches for recorded documents in the public records. A lien search does searches for unrecorded liens, violations, and encumbrances. So this is more for the title company, but it's good for you guys to know what we do when we do a lien search is we're looking for unrecorded liens because the seller needs to pay those because if they don't, they attach to the property and the buyer is then responsible for them after closing. So that's page three. Let's move on to page four. Um, permit disclosure. This says that if the seller identifies permits which have not been properly closed out. So let's say they hire a contractor and the contractor did work and then they open the permit and they finish the work and the seller thinks, okay, everything was done, but it turns out that the contractor did not close out the permit. If the seller then finds out about it, the seller needs to give all that information to the buyer, the name of the contractor or any information that they have to the buyer, because with this as his contract, who's responsible for open or expired permits? A buyer, correct. Correct, after closing, yes. So that's why sometimes you might want to consider using a regular contract because the regular contract does what? There's three things. Do you remember from the last class? The regular contract prepare, uh, pays for repairs mm -hmm. up to a certain amount of the purchase price, pays for termites, if there are any, and pays for or requires the seller to close out open and expired permits. What the as-is contract does not do is, it says the seller does not have to pay for repairs, the seller is not responsible for termites, and the seller is not responsible to close out any open permits. The reason why I know some realtors like to use the as-is contract is because there's language in there that says the buyer can cancel during the inspection period for whatever reason. And a lot of people and buyers like that flexibility, but it hinders them a little bit because now they're responsible for these permits if there are any and repairs so what i recommend is to combine the best of two to use the regular residential contract and to add an as is right to inspect addendum which in that addendum says the buyer has the right to cancel during the inspection period for whatever reason so that addendum basically pulled out the language from the as is contract and put it into an addendum so if you use that addendum with the regular contract, you are fully protecting your buyer, and I recommend that strong. Usually a seller prepares Usually a buyer would present an offer, so if you guys are presenting an offer, you want to know. Right, so then you get into the negotiation part. You can say, well then, we're not buying. But, don't make that decision. You should be telling the buyer, here's the reason why I wanted to present a regular contract, it's because you're protected for these three things. I've just been informed by the seller's realtor that they're only accepting as-is contracts, and this is the reason why, because they don't have to pay for repairs or open permits. 
What would you like to do? Do you want to submit an as-is offer, or do you want to look at another property? Put that out there. Don't be responsible, because if you make that decision on having your buyer, and the buyer finds five or $10,000 to close out a permit, but they're going to be looking at you. Do you inspection? No. The open oh, permits? Permit. 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 What if we put this uh, in additional terms, the term which you suggest? Right. So, so you can right. use at least one with yes. the condition that they're going to close all permits. It means you can keep yourself in mind. Sometimes they pop up through You can, but what if you're yes. wrong or what if they that for the title oh. company. They are the ones that. We would do that lien search, and then the lien search is going to tell us. But we don't do the lien searches until after the inspection period is done because we don't want to waste money for the buyer. So that's why it's important. Um, if you are required to use the as is, maybe the seller has multiple offers and you want to make your offer strong. Then, okay, use the as is, but then try adding, and like Katharina said in the last contract I presented to you guys, there was additional language in there that says, okay, seller is responsible to close out all open or expired price. Try putting that in there. It's always in there, they're usually blank, but you can add it in there, yes, and that would be right there. But then that's the negotiation part. You need to find out what you want to do, how strong your offer is, does the seller have any other offers? I mean, it's hard to tell, but that's why you got to make the big bucks to so make that decision. But please offer that option to your buyer. Don't be the one that makes that decision because if it turns out to be wrong, then they're going to blame you. All right? Next, page five, they expanded the term FERPTA. Before it just said FERPTA, but now they're explaining to you what it is. It's the Foreign Investment and in Real Property Tax Act. Do we all know what FERPTA is? FERPTA is required when the seller is a what? Foreign. Foreign. Correct. So it's important when you guys get a listing that, I guess, during your intake, one of the questions should be, are you a foreigner? If the seller says yes, you need to immediately refer them to a PERTA accountant because there's forms that they need to fill out and there's documents that need to be submitted to the IRS before closing. If the documents are submitted to the IRS before closing, the title company holds a certain amount. If it's not, then we have to send that money to the IRS. And then the accountant has to contact the IRS. And in giving money, it's a lot easier to get money from the IRS. So make sure you refer them to a first accountant as soon as you find out that they are a foreigner. That's his exception. There are exceptions. So the exceptions are if it's under 300000 the purchase price, and the buyer is going to be using it as a residence and not renting it out more than half the time that they own it during the first two years. 15% is 0%. Under 300000 and buyer using it as a residence, 0% withholding. If the buyer is going to... 15% of time to leave. Not Sorry? Only, not uh, all two years. 50, Just 15% of the... 50, 5, 0. Yes. So basically, it basically means that you're going to use it more than you're going to rent it. Now, why the government made that regulation, I'm not really sure, but that's the rate of 50%, 50% of the time it's in use, the buyer is using it more than they're renting it. So under 300000 and buyer uses it as a residence, zero withholding. Above 300000 but less than $1 million, and buyer using it as a residence, 10% withholding. Over $1 million, and buyer using it as a residence, 15%. Now, from zero to over a million, if the buyer is going to be using it for rental, 15% no matter what. Those are the new changes for FERC. So, it's important that you tell the seller this, because if the seller is not aware of this and they go to closing and they find out that the title company withheld 15% of the purchase price, and they're not aware of this, they're going to be upset with you. So I've okay. seen twice closing blowing on that. Sure. Twice. Yeah. One was 1.2, one was 700, blowing, people walk away. I had one, and it 
almost blue, and believe it or not, it was saved. Not a happy seller, but not happy. Not a happy seller. Right. A happy uh, seller means not good yes. for you guys because no, but they did close. The scramble, the seller's agent scrambling at the last minute to try to explain that at the table was quite something. Did they see. make price even they find out? Uh, no, but they were just horrified. Basically, <laughs> the seller is now obligated to close. You come to the closing table. There's no more outs. So they are required to close no matter what. They try not to, and then there's litigation that's going to be involved. But they are required to close no matter what, so they're going to be very upset if they didn't know that. So just tell them at the very beginning, and then refer them to a firm that um, and then you'll be protected. Oh, no. Withholding letter, right. So there are certain documents the accountant will prepare before closing. It's the 8288 form. They're going to send all those documents to the IRS. They need to provide the title company a copy of that and proof of mailing. If we receive that before closing, we keep those funds in escrow in our escrow account. If they don't do that, we need to send those funds to the IRS. It's much easier to get it back from John than from the IRS. <laughs> exactly. So if they uh, send those documents to the IRS and show us proof of we're withholding escrow, then they're going to work with the IRS, they're going to send them information that says, okay, they bought it for this amount, they sold it for this amount, this is the capital gains, but minus deductions, so here's the tax, here's the tax rate that applies to this person, so this is the amount that should be withheld and sent to the IRS. The IRS will agree or disagree, send a different amount, and they'll work it out. And then they'll send us a form, it's a withholding certificate form, directly from the IRS to us that says, okay, title company, send us this amount and return the rest to the seller. And that's how that works. Can they deduct any repairs? Right? Yes. <coughs> There's a bunch of deductions, but so as we said... So they need to collect all uh, <coughs> checks for repairing the They should, they but what you're going to say is talk to your accountant and the accountant's going to tell them exactly what they need. Don't, don't give them that advice because we're not 100% sure what they've tactically got to use. Yes? Can this seller work for, work for example, if uh, they didn't get from the receipt or something like that, that from on the box, can they walk? Is it a reason for that? In the contract? So you know what? I don't want to walk because you can use something from the, the receipt, which is not all the juice. Condo Rider provides that the buyer can cancel the contract within three days of receipt of the condo box. If they never receive the condo box, that still applies. So actually, they didn't take that all the way to close it. They, they received the condo box, but mm -hmm. they didn't send them to the receipt. Oh, uh, well, then that's a great area. You're going to go, let's say you go to court and say, here's the email that we sent them the condo box. I asked for the condo receipt. They never sent it to me. The judge is going to say, okay. Receive. Did you receive it? And if they say no, we didn't receive it, then there's affidavit, then there's a bunch of stuff. Ask for it, and if you ask for it, put it in writing, and then ask for it a second time, and if they don't give it to you, then you can write an email that says this is going to confirm that you've received the condo docs, print that email, and put it in the file. I mean, that's the backup. Okay, so that's FERPTA. Just the main thing with FERPTA, refer them to a FERPTA account, and you guys will be a lot happier. This is for a foreign seller. Foreign seller is only. Even if it's LLC. Any, any foreign seller, it doesn't matter if it's an LLC, trust, individual, a tax, if they're considered a foreigner, a tax has to be with them. If there's a foreign buyer, it doesn't matter. Foreign buyers are not affected on purchases. This is only for foreign sellers. Okay. Next, page six. There's nothing, no changes on page six. No changes on page seven. Change on page eight. We briefly talked about this. This is the forces of nature. Um, it says seven days there. It was three days, so they're expanding that. And the 30 days was 14 days, so they're expanding the time to close after a major event. Next page, page nine. Closing location, they've added a couple things here. It says the closing will be in the, at the office of the closing agent. Obviously, we do closings here. Um, or on line 464 or 440, 
444, or at such other location agreed to by the parties. That's usually not a big deal. We handle that. We contact the sellers, we contact the buyers, and we work that out. Um, they added on line 445, overnight courier. Before it just said mail and electronic means. Now this allows sellers to sell out of state. If they're not here, we can email them the documents, they can print them out, sign them, and they overnight it back to us. We were doing that anyway, but they just made it clear that it's allowed. Okay, next, line 452. This is the United States Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network Geographic Targeting Order, FinCEN GTOs. What this basically means is any purchase, if you represent a buyer, you buy anything over $1 million, and he uses any part of that purchase by way of cashier's checks or money orders, we as a title company have to report information about that buyer to the government. Why are, we, why are they requiring us to do that? Because the government is protecting against money laundering. So they're going to want to know, where do they get this cash? Where did it come from? And they want to be able to find that information. So, one way to avoid this, and the only way to avoid this, is to tell, if you represent a million dollar buyer, tell them to send all deposits and all monies by wire transfer only. If they do that, then there's no reporting required. Oh. No, 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 no. Yes, that's correct. I look a little suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I think. But, but if it's wire transferring, Correct. So even deposits, you might want to tell your million dollar buyer, make all deposits, even if it's for 5000 But then it has to stay at least three months. If it's cash or something, it has to be to show three months in the, in the account, right? Three months? No. Nope. If it's, if it's like, let's say, let's say that, hey, I have a cash, and, okay, I cannot get cash, so in order for it to be uh, passed by you, it has to show like a certain amount of time in the bank, right? Sitting in the bank a certain amount of time. Oh, that's for a mortgage? No, cash, it comes to us. If we get a wire, we can close that same debt. I don't have to wait for anything. Cash is cash. So you're talking about, okay. I'm talking about if you represent a buyer and they're buying something for over a million dollars, there's this new order by the Treasury Department for Broward County, Miami, and Palm Beach that is requiring the title company, there's a form that we fill out, who the buyer right. is, what their social right. security number is, right. what their occupation is, their address, and a whole bunch of stuff. Right. If they use any part of the purchase by money order or cashier's checks or cash. Right. They have to use any part? Yes, any part. No meaning? No. If they send me a dollar cashier's check and they're buying something for over a million dollars, I need to report to the government mm. where they got that dollar. So there's a regulation. So everything above a million. What about Correct. The above? Correct. 999.99, no. But Ben said be careful. So just a simple thing is if you have a million dollar buyer, hopefully you all will one day if you haven't already. Just make sure they send all deposits to us since we collect deposits by wire transfer and then you'll be protected and you're good to go. Alright? Next, prorations. This is just more for us. They want us to collect prorations based on the current year's taxes. We do that anyway. Um, but then they say in cases, this is what they added, they want us to give the allowance on the maximal allowable discount applicable. So what that means is the tax is going to be a certain amount. They want us to give that 4% uh, credit, which is if you pay in November, you get a 4% uh, discount on the property taxes. That's what they want us to do. So that's more for us and more for you guys. Page 10 of 12, line 530. That's where the definition of the loan commitment was. They deleted that, so that's no longer there. And regarding the FERC to withholding, no withholding is required if the seller is not a foreign person. And the way that they're going to prove that is we make them sign an affidavit at closing that says that they're not a foreign person. So that's what that certification sign on the penalties of perjury means. That's an affidavit. Uh, that's more than that. 
Dale, we talked about if the seller is a foreign person and has a receipt of a building certificate, talked about us holding it and giving money to the IRS and giving the rest to the seller. So this is the new as is contract. You are now up to date. If you have any questions, please let me or Yuri know. I'll stand here pretty much every day. So good for you. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Because I don't think we've ever talked about it. So, usually all of us would like to deal with clients who have a good credit, nice income, no bankruptcies, no short sale, no late in mortgage payments, and so on, so on, so on. Unfortunately, in real life, sometimes we have a customers that has some derogatory information on their credit. Being that foreclosure, being that bankruptcy chapter 7, chapter 11, being that late payments, so on, so on, so on. So I just want everybody to be 100% sure that if somebody filed a bankruptcy three days ago, it doesn't mean that there is no mortgage financing option for that person. It only means that that option will be more expensive. We do have lenders who are provide financing for people one day out of foreclosure, one day out of bankruptcy, all of those situations. And it's not a hard money. Obviously, hard money always on the table. And <clears throat> excuse me, there are only very few exceptions where we are not give a hard money loan. But I'm talking about bank loans, amortized loans, where you don't need to tell your customer, okay, you're taking the hard money. Not only it's nine, no. <clears throat> excuse me, eight and a half or ten, but it's interest only. So in the end of the term of the loan, two years, three years, five years, you need to take and bring the whole amount back. No, I'm talking about amortized loan. Those are our loans, adjusted rate mortgage loans, and the interest rate there starts, let's say, from seven, but it's still an option. And though if you have client who will tell you, look, I want to buy this house, my wife likes this house, we absolutely have to have this house. And, but I filed a bankruptcy four months ago. It doesn't mean that there are no financing options. There are almost always financial, financing options, even for people like that. And like I said, it's amortized loan. Yes, interest rate instead of five will be <clears throat> eight or seven and a half, or maybe if they have a good credit, it will be 6.75, so the difference is not so huge, but it's amortized loan, so they're paying every month some portion of the principal and the interest, so there is no balloon payment in the end of the term of the loan. Okay, it's very important, we have more and more people coming to us saying, oh, what happened, it happened. I filed a bankruptcy three years ago, and I don't want to wait for another year. I want to purchase now. Okay, that's one part of what I would like to say. The second part are self-employed people who write off everything. So their income, according to their taxes, is zero or close to zero. Their income in no way, shape, or form will be enough to purchase, to get a mortgage for the purchase that they want. There are some options for those people. There are bank statement problems where we are going to get 24 months bank statements. We're going to get P&Ls for every year or part of the year from the accountant and we still being able to use this information to obtain the loan. Again, it will, it will be a little bit more, more expensive, but it is an option. 
and when I'm meeting with self-employed people, it's always a, a, a dilemma. It's always like a numbers game. Because I'm telling them, okay, you have two options. One, for two years, file your taxes and pay IRS whatever to show enough income to be able to get the mortgage that you want. That's option number one. Option number two, go by those alternative ways to obtain the mortgage and still write off everything. So you just need to calculate what's better for you. But the options are there. So people with derogatory information in the, on, on, on the credit, bankruptcies, late mortgage, you know, if somebody has a late mortgage paid for 12 months, there are no Fannie Mae, there are no conventional financing for those people. They need to wait until 12 months from that event occur. Or self-employed people who write in all, everything or all, all ma majority of their income, we still have bank statement programs that will allow them to obtain more. Any questions? It's all yours. Thank okay. you. All right, Thank, you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for all the answers you gave us, too, on that uh, contract. That's great. So I'm Ben, for some of you that don't know me. I'm the new uh, managing broker. So we're going to have a little meeting here about um, the first contact. I figured we'd start there. Since I have a little bit different philosophy about how we approach clients, okay, I want to share that with you, okay? Um, a lot of people are trying to give an exam on the phone when the person first calls, okay? That's generally not why the people are calling. They're generally calling because they want to go see a property. And they're hoping that you can show them that property, okay? A lot of times, if you get into a robotic examination, they, that doesn't work, okay? You can miss a lot of opportunities, okay? Um, I am a proponent of meet the client, sell yourself, okay? If you sell yourself, the property will sell itself, okay? You're gonna be able to match the right property with the client, okay, when the time comes. Because you're gonna they're gonna open up to you and you're gonna know everything they want, the difference between what they want and what they need. But you need that opportunity to engage with them, like anything else. Okay? If it wasn't the case, right now there's I think it's 95% of all real estate transactions are still done with humans, okay? Even though they start off online and everybody really starts off online, they end up with a realtor, right? And they end up with a realtor for uh, you know, different reasons. But it's usually because they connected with that person, right? Not that, oh, this person asked me all of these questions exactly as uh, you know they read on the script and the sheet and they sounded so robotic that, gosh, that's what I love, right? They usually don't do that. So um, I want a more relaxed uh, type of situation. We have uh, groups here that I'm working with very closely, OK, that I want to in improve the ratios, OK? And these, getting, getting this type of relaxed conversation first, OK, is uh, really opens up a lot of doors. It just happened with you, did it not, uh, the other day? Was it you that asked me if you could just go, the person want to see one con one property? Was that you? I forget. Oh, that I was just you. asked you because they were not pre-qualified. Uh, yeah. Right, they weren't pre-qualified, but the property was close by, and they wanted to go out and see it, and I said, you know what? Get out there, go meet the client, sell yourself, right? Pre-qualify, you know, pre you pre-qualify them on the road. You're not you know, you're not making money just sitting here pushing paper, right? And we're going to get to a place where you have help, okay? That will enable you to get out there and get out with the clients or invite them into this beautiful place. You have uh, half the battle won if you can get the client 
to come in, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I decided to do today, just because, I said, well, I, I like to teach reality. What's, what I say is real, okay? It's very real. It comes from practice. It comes from doing it, okay? So I wanted to spend a few minutes. I took a phone call today, okay? And I just wanted you to hear my interaction with somebody right before the meeting. And I said, yeah, let me just see if I can get somebody. I took a call, and the first call, um, I engaged with them, okay? And I just wanted you to listen to it, okay? You're welcome to critique it, okay? Um, but you'll see where we got to, okay? In the phone call, I got everything I wanted to know without almost asking anything, okay? So I want, hopefully we can all get to that place. So do you have the recording? And we'll kind of stop it as we go. It's about a 10 minute recording. So, um, it was really neat. I don't know what the person who's on the other line, I have no idea, right? Uh, you, you don't know if they're pre-qualified, if they're serious buyers, uh, you know, what they're looking for. One So this is a lead call. She's got a work on her we are now connecting you to one station. Set appointment. 
So did you make contact? And then did you set an appointment? It doesn't say, did you make contact? And then did you ask them pre-qualification questions? It's there for, it's for a reason. Get that appointment. Nothing is more important, okay, than getting that appointment. Okay? Start off there, and then we'll ease on into it. Oh, yeah, sure, I can accommodate you. I can show you the property. No problem. What works for the best for you? Let me get with the guys. And I'll start. Okay? Yeah. This is the thing. I, I, cause, um, I work up in Virginia, so I'm, I'm here basically during the week. Okay. And then I, I fly back home on weekends. Okay. Um, so, uh, I know it's something to good day. Um, yeah, sure. And any day, I, I'll find out if the owner's okay with showing on Sunday. Um, uh, but, but you said you fly out to Virginia on the weekend. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, okay, so. Yeah, yeah. But what, you'll say, uh... Basically, my schedule is every week. Okay, yeah. So, I have different days off. Okay, yeah. Okay, my problem, though. Yeah, because I'm going to be in Miami this weekend, Saturday, Sunday. And I got to start back Sunday, so... Okay. I'm having a conversation with this guy. Uh, okay, no problem. What times work best for you? We try not to uh, schedule anything uh, before noon on Sundays for folks. So um, it, it's early afternoon, okay for you? Um, you yes, sir. Uh, I need Sunday, Sunday evening now. Uh, okay, no problem. Um, tell me what times work best for you, and then I'll try to accommodate. If the owner's okay with uh, showing a little bit earlier on Sunday, we can certainly do that. I'm up at 5.30, so you don't have to worry about me, okay? So I'm all way there. It's not difficult, so it's not a problem. Uh, well, you know, Sunday gets up to 12, from 12 to 12, or it's almost great. That's so something from 12 to 2? Okay, no problem. Um, Locked it down. Do you need, uh, is your uh, spouse or two for you and your wife, right? Is she going to be available to see you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's oh, okay, great. Um, did you, uh, is there anything else that caught your eye out there? Would you like me to see if I can send you any property that we have, uh, that... Okay, real quick, you see, I locked down the appointment first and foremost. I can send them more properties, we can talk about pre-qualifying, I want to lock down the appointment, I'm happy to show them the property, right? Now he's feeling relaxed. Oh, that's great. Oh, you know, I finally got somebody that's not giving me the third degree on the phone. Right? I'm sure I'm not the first person he's called. <clears throat> Zill, right? So then I found out if there's the spouse, because he said it's a premium spouse, if they're going to be there too. So I confirmed that they're going to be there. Probably they're both going to be decision makers, right? So in the event he said, no, she can't be there, I would lead into other questions. Is your, would she normally need to be there, uh, blah, 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 and try to set up a time where they'll both be there, okay? But in general, I got the appointment set. So first part of my job is done, okay? The most important part of my job, according to my philosophy and the way I do it, okay? Now, watch, how, watch as, they, uh, as we continue. Be in the you know price range or you know what you're looking for. Yeah. Um. Well, to be honest, because we're we're doing we live we live in the south side of Miami. Okay. So okay. you're out in the uh, yeah. old say Canada area. That, that's a, yeah, I'm very I work when I work full time. Like they run the road. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. and, and we want to we just want to get closer to the ocean. Right. Okay. Um, what we're looking for is, is you know, we want to refer to a mm -hmm. you know, We even see a one, a one bedroom that we really love. And, okay. But we will, you know, we prefer two bedroom with just a kitchen of a family or, sure. you know, our, 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 so we'll do one bedroom and above, okay? Okay, and just, you know, what we're looking for, we're looking for, we're looking for, we're looking for a condo that's really, they say, okay, you know, we're going to be in the kitchen, I'll take it back, you know, that would be, you know, we, we, we went to whatever, a person home, 
and you know, we, we kind of want to, did you want to move, move to the movement or something? Because we're already hooked up. Good gotcha. Okay. And, and are you okay? Did you hear that? We went with that with our present home. I'm listening, okay? One of the number one things that people complain about is that the realtor doesn't listen to anything they're saying. They just didn't listen. And I'm listening. So I'm listening. And I'm catching everything he said. So he said, oh, I went through with that with my first home, or my current home, whatever. So what's well, my immediate next train of thought? Well, you know, with your home. Right? That's the next place I'm going. Automatic. Second engine. Did you ask how, or what is his budget? Uh, that's you all. Know, this is an investment that... It's all going to be there. All the right, I mean, uh, uh, the second home, home, are you going to be renting out your current home, or do you going to sell that, or, or do you have to wait to sell anything, or you're good? Um, we haven't put it on the market. We have not put it out on the market yet. We, we, we would, who would want to sell it? You know, okay. you want to get rid of that one and purchase a condo and then, you know, just order your yeah. we, we, we want to sell our present home. Now my focus yes. is on... Do you need to sell your current home before you buy it? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. No problem. Yeah. 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 But purchase it, yes, because we'd like to put a big down payment. So what is really going to happen at my appointment? We're going to talk about the property. We're going to do, we're going to do a listing presentation at a purchase apartment, okay? You see how I haven't done anything robotic. I let the conversation go and engage, listen, think, you know, and, 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 and work what's happening, because every client is different, right? Okay. Right. And a lot of times when people talk about selling your property. Okay, right? so you go out and you say, okay, let me just see what's out there on the market right now, okay? And then um, when you start seeing, like, let's say this property is good, uh, um, normally what you do is you, when you put your property up on the market, okay, and then um, you get a contract, they are more likely to entertain your offers, okay, once they, what's your kind of in movement. Um, so, you know, if you're looking at a property now and then you still have to put your property on the market and then sell and then get a contract, there might be a longer delay where a seller may not be uh, wanting to wait that long, but we'll cross that bridge. So see this property, okay? Um, okay. We'll, we'll send you out some other properties that match your criteria, okay? If you're going to put a large down because of uh, the sale of your house, then you probably won't have much many issues uh, financing. We have a beautiful office right here in Sunny Isles. We have, if you need it, we have our mortgage company, and title company, and house, and uh, that's so okay. We can certainly help you with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah, so basically, you know, that, that's part you know, of what we're going to do. You know, okay. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not also, you know, I mean, I think, you know, there's a lot of beautiful buildings and all that. And we're not really looking for a high, a high, high, you know, HOE. You know, we're looking, we're, we're, you know, our, like, my max is pretty much ever was today, it was 500. Okay. So, you know, okay. Notice I'm not even asking any questions. He's just opening up at this point. He's met somebody that he's just talking to, and and it's just we're going to be able. And when I meet him on Sunday, he's going to tell me, "Oh, I'm going to know all the situation and everything," and I'm going to walk away, you know, probably with a listing, you know, appointment also, and a nice client that, you know, that. Uh, no, no, no. It's in uh, it's in Miami. It's in Kendall. He, he flies every week to Virginia to go to work and then flies back. So I'm not, you have to use, you know, some judgment and let people go a little bit too, right? I got to make a judgment call. He owns his own place. He wants to sell it. He's going to put a large down. He flies to work a week. At, he's probably okay. I probably don't have to give him the third degree about pre-calling him first before I can do, you know, I'll go out and see him, okay? Okay, go ahead. 